If you have your Bibles this morning, please be turning to the Gospel of John, chapter 10, and verse 16. John, chapter 10, and verse 16, as we introduce the calling of God this morning, Jesus said, And I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall become one flock, with one shepherd. Now, when we think about hearing the voice of God, I want you uh, to ask yourself this question. What are some of the most recognizable voices to you? But when you think of recognizable voices, who comes to mind? I think of actor James Earl Jones. He has a memorable voice, and, and I can hear him in Star Wars as Darth Vader saying, no, I am your father. I can hear that voice. I think of singer Willie Nelson. I can hear that twang on the road again. Can't, can't you hear it? I think of sportscaster, and this is going to date me a little bit, although he was just a, a shade before my time, Howard Cosell. Can you hear his voice? This is Howard Cosell. I, I can hear his voice. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 through 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 through 24. For indeed, Jews ask for signs. You see, the Jews were looking for miracles. And Greeks search for wisdom. We learn from the Bible that the Greeks were always wanting to learn something new. In Acts chapter 17, Luke records that for us. But here Paul says, we preach Christ crucified. Now to the Jews, Paul says, that was a stumbling block. To the Gentiles, it was foolishness. But to those who are called, verse 24, both Jews and Greeks. What is it? The gospel is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And so God's call, I want to start by saying, is exceptionally prestigious. It's prestigious because it's a high calling. Look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, Paul writes, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The King James Version actually says, the high calling. And this description depicts the source of the call. The emphasis here is on who calls. It's a high calling because the God of heaven is the one who is actually calling us. Have you ever received an invitation that surprised you? Someone invited you that you did not expect to give you an invitation? There is no higher invitation than the one that God extends to mankind. It's prestigious because it's a high calling. And it's prestigious because it's a holy calling. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9, Paul writes, Who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. This description depicts the seriousness of the call. The emphasis is on the purpose of the call. And we have a high calling because it's from God, but it's a holy calling because God has given us a purpose to accomplish. He's given us a mission to accomplish. We've been set apart for an intended work by God. Now, if you think about 
a lifeguard. It's very important for a lifeguard to understand what their purpose is. You understand, a lifeguard's purpose is not to get a good tan. I've had lifeguards who told me, though, hey, I want to be a lifeguard so I can work on my tan. But that's not the purpose of that job. You need to know the purpose. Some might be doing it just for the paycheck. But again, that's not the purpose of that job. The purpose of, of a lifeguard is to protect human life. And so we need to understand this calling is prestigious, first of all, because it's a high calling, second of all, because it's a holy calling, and third, it's a prestigious calling because it's a heavenly calling. We have a heavenly calling. Look at Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1, the Hebrews writer says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, Consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. The Hebrews writer says, we have a heavenly calling. This description depicts the superiority of the call. The the emphasis is on the value of the call. There is no more valuable call than the call of Christ. Have you ever gotten a phone call from a number you didn't recognize and you just didn't want to take the call? I I know that everyone who has a phone can relate to exactly what I'm talking about. You might be wondering, why are you asking if? You should be asking how many in a day, right? Well, what, what is your inclination when you get a call from a number you don't recognize? I'm going to push it to voicemail. I'm just going to send it on to voicemail. Now, have you ever checked the voicemail and thought to yourself, I was right. Didn't know it. It was spam. It wasn't worthy of my time. I can just delete the voicemail. Unimportant. But have you ever, have you ever listened to the voicemail and went, oops, that was an important call. I needed to take that call. It was not good for me to push that to voicemail. Now, of course, you know, I would never do that to any member of the Flower Mound Church of Christ. (laughs) I might have to respond to the invitation this morning. Um, I think I probably have done that uh, once or twice. Um, A couple years ago, I was sitting at dinner with my family and the family of our landlord and Jana called me and I thought you know what I have a good reason not to take this phone call but it's Jana so I'm gonna take it and you know what she was in an accident on I-35 and she totaled out her vehicle I'm glad I didn't miss that call I'm glad I didn't push it to voicemail God's calling really is a royal calling. Look at the way Paul writes about it in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. In Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 3, Paul writes, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. This is a prestigious calling. And so here, Paul reasons that you need to walk worthily of that calling. Well, What does that look like, Paul? He tells us in verses 2 and 3, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing forbearance to one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Nothing compares to the call of God. God's call is exceptionally prestigious. That's number one. And God's call comes with remarkable privileges. That's number two. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. 1 Peter 5 and verse 10 says, And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. I want you to note, first of all, that God's call will perfect you. We're privileged to go from darkness to light. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 
and verse 9, Peter wrote, But you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Now, I've focused on this verse, and even recently, as we uh, considered the responsibility of every Christian to be involved in, in the process of evangelism, of winning the lost. But I, I never focused in on that word called. Notice here, Peter says, you are called from darkness to light. And with that call, we have the hope of perfection. God's call will confirm. We're, we're privileged to go from alienation to fellowship. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. In 1 Corinthians 1, 9, Paul says, God is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you understand that before we became Christians, we were alienated from God? This is the beautiful language of Ephesians chapter 2. But, but here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9, it says that that call brings us into a covenant relationship with God, that we have fellowship, association with God. God's call will strengthen. We're privileged to go from labor to rest. Look at Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Jesus offers this invitation. Hear the voice of the Lord. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God's call is a call to perfect from light to darkness. It is, it is a call to confirm from alienation to fellowship. It is a call to strengthen from labor to rest. And God's call, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 says, it is also an opportunity to be established. God's call will establish. We're privileged to go from bondage to liberty. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. In Galatians 5 and verse 13, Paul says, For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Do you think about the fact that we were enslaved to sin before we were baptized into Christ? But, but as a New Testament Christian... We've been freed from that slavery. We now are slaves, as Paul puts it in Romans chapter 6, of righteousness. Birth into a royal family comes with significant advantages, doesn't it? If you're born into a royal family, it comes with opportunity. And it's an opportunity that you have that others don't have. It's not available to others. It comes with a reputation. And you understand that when you're born into a royal family, it's a reputation you didn't earn. It was just given to you. It comes with wealth. You will receive an inheritance for which you did absolutely nothing. And so birth into a royal family comes with significant advantages. But all of this pales in comparison to the royal privileges of the Christian. It really is a beneficial calling. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, Peter says, For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. You see, when we're called into a relationship with God, we are granted remarkable privileges. And here Peter says of those promises that they are precious 
and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. It really is a beneficial calling and nothing blesses like God's call. That There is no blessing like the call of God. God's call follows number three, a specific process. Number one, it's especially prestigious. Number two, it has remarkable privileges. And number three, God's call follows a specific process. Many people want to know if God's call to save you comes in a dream. Does it come through a vision? They want to know if God speaks to you. They want to know if you hear his voice. And they think his call is miraculous. They, they think it's mysterious. And while our, fa- our father, while he could call us in that way, the Bible teaches that he no longer uses those means. He no longer uses those methods. And I think it's fair to say that God's call has been misunderstood in every generation. People don't understand the simplicity of the call of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, Paul says that God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Can you believe that we serve such a benevolent God that it is his earnest desire that everyone be saved? The call of God crosses ethnic barriers. It crosses societal barriers. It crosses gender barriers. Look at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. Paul says there's neither Jew nor Greek. That's ethnic barriers. He says... There's neither slave nor free man. That's societal barriers. There's neither male nor female. That's gender barriers. He says, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The call of God crosses ethnic, societal, and gender barriers. So how does God call? How does he do it? If it's not miraculous, and mysterious, by what means and by what methods does God call? In James chapter 1 and verse 18, James writes for us here that in the exercise of his will, and, and that's whose will really matters, doesn't it? In the exercise of his will, the Father's will, he brought us forth, James says, by the word of truth. you know how God calls? He calls by this book right here. By his holy word. And then James says, so that we might become the first fruits among his creatures. If you want to be among the first fruits of the creatures of God, you need to respond to the call of God through the word of God. And more specifically, it is the gospel of God. It's the gospel of Christ that calls. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14. Because here's where Paul makes it so plain as to how we're called. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14. And it was for this he called you through our gospel that you might gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you hope to gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's going, to because, it's going to be because you received the call of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter says it this way in Acts chapter 2 and verse 39. He says, And the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call 
to himself. God is calling through the gospel. Go back to 2 Peter chapter 1. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, we have this same emphasis laid out. Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. You understand, if you want to enjoy grace and peace, and if if you want it to be multiplied, it's linked to knowledge. It's linked to an understanding of God's word. Verse 3, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And we've always used this passage to talk about the all-sufficiency of the scripture. The Bible really is enough. It gives you everything you need. It's everything that pertains to life and godliness. But Peter, how did God grant that to us? Notice he says, through the true knowledge. It goes back to a knowledge of God's will through the true knowledge of him. And then watch this, who called us, who called us by his own glory and excellence. It was remarkable to me in my study in preparing for this lesson, how many times that word called was used in verses that I'm familiar with, but that I never really emphasized or or even noticed was a part of those verses because that's not the way that that I use them. It's not the way that I teach them. But here you can see in 2 Peter 1 and verse 3 that we're called through the knowledge of God's word and nothing saves but God's call. God's call is exceptionally prestigious, number one. God's call comes with remarkable privileges, number two. And God's call follows a specific process, number three. In Matthew chapter 22, in verse 14, Jesus said, Many are called, but few are chosen. You see, to be called by God simply means to hear the gospel message. And to be chosen by God simply means to heed the gospel message. You need to do what you're called to do. And so I ask you this morning, have you answered the most important call you will ever receive? You don't want to send God's call to voicemail. He's patiently waiting for your answer. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, Peter says, That God is not wishing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. And God's call will make an eternal difference in your life. In John chapter 6 and verse 45, Jesus said they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned comes to the Father. That's Jesus telling us that we need to hear the word of God. And then in John chapter 8 and verse 24, Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. See, this is the call of God, to hear the word of God, to believe the word of God. In Luke chapter 3 and verse 13, Jesus said, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Again, part of the call of God. And then in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 32, he says, If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father who's in heaven. And that's part of the call of God. And finally in Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He who disbelieves shall be condemned. That's the plan of God, to call man to himself, to hear, believe, repent, confess and be baptized and if you're in our assembly this morning and you haven't heeded the call of Jesus our prayer is that you will and if you need to know more about the call if you want more information about the call though I want you to know it's a simple call God never set this up in a complex way he made it so that everyone could read and understand but if you need assistance we want to do that if you're a child of God today and and you've obeyed the call but you've You've wandered away from your responsibilities as a Christian, and you need the prayers of this church. You need the support of this church to to faithfully obey the call.
Whatever your need is, won't you let it be known as together we stand and sing.